This episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Keep watching for an exclusive offer for my subscribers from Skillshare. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today we're talking DCC wiring and I'm showing you how I wired this section up for DCC. Welcome back everybody. Today it's DCC wiring day. We're going to wire up this section of the layout. Plus I'm gonna talk some about DCC wiring because a lot of you have asked for some advice on it and how to do it. And it's really not that complicated. It's pretty easy to learn. Speaking of learning, if you're looking to learn stuff, not just about DCC, you should check out this episode's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare has tons of classes that you can look at to increase your skills in your hobbies or your passions or things like that. Let's say, for example, you want to get better at painting backdrops for your model railroad. All you have to do is go to Skillshare and search landscape painting and there they are. A great example of what I'm doing right now is I'm using Skillshare to increase my knowledge of Arduino programming and project building so that I can build bigger and better projects for the channel right here. Skillshare was created purely for learning, which means that there are no ads. Skillshare is always adding great content. And for members, they even have live classes with some of their most popular teachers. Now, if you're looking to join, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. And you can start exploring your creativity today. All right, before we get to actually wiring, let's talk a little bit about how DCC works. DCC, or Digital Command and Control, was invented in the 1980s in Germany. The way it differs from standard DC is while DC varies the voltage that goes to the track to control the speed, DCC supplies a constant voltage to the track. In DCC, you have a command station which sends all of the signals to the track. That command station modulates voltage to the track to encode digital messages while providing electric power. Now, one common thing that is said is that DCC is AC or alternating current, and that's not entirely true. DCC does not follow a sine wave, which standard alternating current does, but rather it uses a modulated pulse wave. So you use pulse width modulation in order to send your signals. The difference is, rather than reversing the flow of electricity constantly, you're quickly switching the voltage to the rails on and off to create the digital ones and zeros. DCC locomotives have a decoder that can decode these ones and zeros and can use them to command the locomotive to do different actions. A couple perks of this system are one, it allows you to run multiple locomotives independently and simultaneously on the same track, and it also allows for low speed operations, whereas DC low speed operations tend to be a little bit jerkier and uneven. Wiring is also significantly reduced compared to a standard DC layout. Basically, all the complexity of the system is pre-built into the command station and the decoders, and all you have to do is connect them via the track. Now, one thing that can mess up a DCC system is a short circuit. Now, most commonly used DCC systems do have short circuit protection, and this includes DCC++ and DCC++ EX. And what basically the most common form of short circuits is, is having a piece of metal or something that will touch both rails at the same time, and this will cause the short circuit. Now, the reason that the locomotive doesn't do this is because the motor and the decoder offer a level of impedance that does not allow for a short circuit and metal wheel sets typically have a little plastic flange gap that will keep the metal wheel sets from completing the circuit and short circuiting your layout now that we understand how DCC works let's check out how I wired this section of the layout DCC wiring is fairly simple and straightforward. Now, some of these components are Kato Unitrack specific. Specifically, I'm talking about all of the unit joiners. 
but you can still use plenty of the terminal strips that I'm using here as well as the wiring. I'll be using 22 gauge wiring as well as 16 gauge wiring. The 22 gauge wiring is for the feeders and the 16 gauge is going to be for the main connector to the main DCC bus that is on the other section of the layout. Now, if you're looking to do this with just some regular old track, you're going to be soldering your connections more than likely. When wiring this section of track, we're going to connect it in multiple places to a DCC bus. A DCC bus is pretty much a hub for all your wires to come to and then run to your DCC command station. Now, it is very important that all of the feeder wires connect to the same rails throughout. And what I mean by this in this example is you see a blue and a red wire. You always want to make sure that that red wire is always connected to the same rail and that blue wire is always connected to that same rail. If you mix them up and you connect the red wire sometimes on one rail and on, sometimes on another rail or the blue wire sometimes on one rail or another rail, you're going to get a short circuit and your system's not going to work. Now one of the big challenges that I have on this layout is I have to get through all of this foam. This is three inches of foam. So the first thing I'm going to do is this is the connector that comes on the Kato unit joiner. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all those off. Then I need to drill holes through. So the first thing I need to do is drill as far down as I can. Now, if you remember from doing the foam, which I'll put a link to that video right up here, I did not secure the foam to the base just yet. So I'm able to take off the sections of foam and once I've gone as far as I can, I can remove them, go to the, the hole that I can see and continue on drilling the hole. Next up, it is time to go ahead and run the wire. And there's several methods you can do this. I've done this using a straw and all sorts of different things. But for this type of run, I really like using bamboo skewers, which you've seen me as one of my favorite things in model railroading. So what I basically do is I take some packing tape and it's really not, doesn't matter too much what tape you want to use. You just want something with a good hold. But I wrap the end of the feeder wire on the end of the, pa of the bamboo skewer with the packing tape. And then I'm going to run it through this section as far as it will go. Now you do have to be careful because foam doesn't uh, drill out clean. So you may get hung on something. So basically you're going to want to slowly pull everything through and you can see right there it actually slipped off so I'm going to go ahead and try and put this back on but I did have to rewrap it after going through that section and basically patience is key especially when you're going through all of these because you may disconnect the wire from the bamboo skewer but if you go slow enough and you're able to just gently and be patient and persistent you can get this through no problem and this is a fairly easy way to get wires through a baseboard. I then repeated this for all my feeder locations. Now for the main line, I had just two main feeder locations, but I also had feeders on each of the sidings. Next, it was time to lift this section up on its side. I am being careful not to dump the foam off since this is not connected just yet. And we can see all the bamboo skewers poking out from where they couldn't go all the way through because of the table underneath. I carefully pull the feeders through using the bamboo skewers. Again, this made it a lot easier to get those feeders through. Now it's time to connect our DCC bus. Now in the, this particular section, this is kind of a sub bus from the main bus, but the connection I'm going to be running from the main bus is essentially the same as coming straight from the command station. So just consider this a DCC bus. What I'm going to do is take two of these terminal strips, one for each wire and put them really close together. Next, I'm gonna put these series of jumpers that actually came with this pack. I'm gonna link this specific pack of terminal strips in the description below so that you can get these. But basically, what this is going to do is make each side an entire hub for one of the two wires for your DCC system. Now it's time to connect the feeders and you're seeing I'm using another terminal strip. Now I have two reasons for doing this versus just soldering them or using suitcase connectors or something like, or just putting a longer wire in. Uh, the number one reason is, is I have a ton of these little uh, four position terminal strips laying around and they make connecting wires really easy. The other reason is that this will make modifications such as short circuit protection and things like that 
that in the future a lot easier as well as any sort of current sensing that I want to do. Already having a terminal like this just means that I got to unscrew some stuff rather than cutting into wire. You do not have to do this method to connect your wires. You can certainly just do some soldering or some suitcase connectors or some wire nuts even. Although wire nuts are probably the least secure. Once that's done, I take my feeder wires and connect them to the main bus and I'm going red to red and black to black. It is very important in DCC to prevent short circuits, as I said before, that all of your feeder wires are connected to the same rails that they are routed to. So for this situation, I'm going to be having red wires connect to the blue wires of the Kato Unijoiner feeders, and the black wires are gonna to connect to the white wires of the Kato Terminal Unijoiner feeders. And I want to make sure that the white feeders are always on the outside rail and the blue feeders are always on the inside rail. And now it's just rinse and repeat putting all of these together. Now this little terminal strip right here is actually a mini hub for a couple of the feeders right here, specifically the two siding feeders. Now you can see that I have all of my feeders hooked up to the main bus through those little mini terminal strips. And now I can hook up what's going to be my main feeder back to the main DCC bus that is on the other side of the layout. The last thing I do is I'm going to have a current sensing a grade crossing and it's going to need an additional feeder. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that feeder and then I'll run it at a later date. And now I can sit my layout back down. Apparently my camera wanted me to look like that I was working on the surface of the sun right now. And now I can begin reattaching all of the track. Now there are some special considerations that you're gonna to want to do. Um, I'm going to link one of the uh, best videos for turnouts with Kato Unitrack for DCC. Mike Pfeiffer did it and it's just a solid tutorial and there's no sense in me redoing that tutorial because I'm going to be saying the same thing. So I'm gonna link that right up here as well as in the description below. I can now begin connecting all of my feeders. Now, the one thing you gotta remember is you gotta have those feeders all on the same side. In this case, I'm doing white on the outside, blue on the inside. So when I'm connecting all of these, I'm very careful to make sure that white is going to be on the outside. Now, it doesn't matter which one is which, you just have to have them all be the same and then all be the same as your DCC hub over on the other side of the layout. Now, that's a bit easier to fix if you find that you've wired it reverse of what you've done on the other side of your layout all you have to do is reverse your main feeder wires from the main bus to the sub bus that you have over here and here I have the wires that are feeding to the main bus and I'm going to be using my little quick connectors that I absolutely love this means that if I ever need to move it or work on it I can just disconnect it with this quick plug right there and bada boom bada bing these things are just amazing the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to electrically isolate the two sections with the exception of the DCC wiring. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to be putting some of Kato's insulated unijoiners at the sections that join the two sections of track. Now you can do this by cutting the track or using other insulated rail joiners if you're not using Kato Unitrack, um, but all you have to do is create a small separation in the track. And what this will allow for is it allows me to potentially put circuit breakers into power districts and anything like that and basically assure that everything on this side of the layout is working well there you have it guys DCC wiring and how I wired up this section it's really not that hard to learn and to accomplish it's one of those things I think is pretty intimidating but in the end it actually is fairly easy you just gotta be a little bit patient but overall it's fairly easy so thank you guys so so much for watching special thank you to skillshare for sponsoring this video and i also want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons they're listed right here you can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month a lot of cool things going on there uh just just a bunch of stuff there including models of the month if you're at the five dollar engineer level but I try to keep them in advance notice of everything that is going on on the layout or as much as possible. So you can check that out in the description below. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. 
last week I talked about the wire and we're going to talk about that wiring plus doing some DC. We're gonna talk about DCC wiring and how I wired this section up. That's what we're gonna do. We are going to talk about some wiring today. We're gonna to talk about some DCC wiring and how I wired this section up. Let's do that. That sounds much better. That sounds much, much better. Now, if I can just say it at the right time, that would be wonderful. 